protein electrophoresis. Proteins come in different shapes and sizes and carry different charges. We can separate them by these properties with electrophoresis. For proteins of the same charge, electrophoretic mobility is inversely proportional to the molecular size under a given electric field. Larger proteins receive more friction and migrate slower. However, for proteins of the same size, electrophoretic mobility is proportional to the net charge under a given electric field. Molecules carrying more net charge travel faster. Environmental pH determines the net charge of proteins. When the pH increases, proteins tend to carry negative charge because of the dissociation of its hydrogen ions. However, when the pH decreases, hydrogen ions reassociates with proteins and therefore proteins tend to carry positive charge. The isoelectric point pi of a protein is the pH at which the protein molecule carries zero net charge. For example, a protein that has a pi of 4 carries zero net charge at pH 4. This protein will carry negative charge when pH is above 4 and positive charge when pH drops below 4. The net charge of different proteins with different pi's vary under the same environmental pH. In this example, where the pH is 4, one protein carries net negative charge of 4, one is zero net charge, and one carries net positive charge of 1 due to their different pi's. Therefore, these proteins migrate at different rates and in different directions under a given electric field. One runs towards the anode, one doesn't move, and one migrates towards the cathode. Common techniques in protein electrophoresis include capillary electrophoresis, CE, native polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis, native page, sodium delta cell sulfate polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis, SDS page, isoelectric focusing, IEF, and two-dimensional gel electrophoresis, 2DE. In capillary electrophoresis, a high voltage is applied to both ends of the capillary to generate an electric field. The greater the field strength is, the faster the molecules migrate. Proteins can be quickly separated in the gel matrix inside the capillary according to their charge or size. In native page, native proteins are separated in a polyacrylamide gel by the differences of their native charge density, conformation, and size under the electric field. In SDS page, proteins are pre-treated by an anionic detergent, SDS, which disrupts the tertiary structure of proteins and give proteins a uniform negative charge. Thereafter, the proteins are separated in a polyacrylamide gel only by their molecular size under an electric field. In IEF, proteins are separated based on their PIs. IEF gels contain a prefixed pH gradient. Proteins travel through the pH gradient in a high electric field until they reach their PIs, where they carry no charge and stop moving. 2DE performs SDS page after IEF. In order to further separate proteins with the same PIs by molecular size. SDS page is currently the most commonly used method. The ingredients for the gel in SDS page include acrylamide, bisacrylamide, buffer, water, TMED, APS, and SDS. Under catalysis by TMED, APS generates stable SO4, free radicals when dissolved in water. These free radicals attack double bonds in acrylamide and generate products that also carry free radicals to attack other acrylamides. As a result, 
the polymerization of acrylamide is initiated and a chain reaction of further polymerization occurs due to the subsequent products that also carry free radicals. In the meanwhile, free radicals also attack double bonds in bis-acrylamide to generate free radical products for polymerization. Acting as a bridge, bis-acrylamides form cross-links between linear polyacrylamide molecules. When more cross-linking is generated, a mesh-like structure forms to build up the gel matrix. Reducing agents are mixed into protein samples to break disulfide bonds between and within the molecules. Proteins are then denatured into linear form and gain uniform negative charge after treatment with SDS and boiling. Now that all proteins carry negative charge, they will only migrate towards the anode under a given electric field. In addition, the migration rate will only be determined by the protein's molecular size or molecular weight. Larger proteins migrate slower due to more friction, while smaller proteins migrate faster due to less friction. Furthermore, pore size within the gel is determined by the concentration of the acrylamide gel. Lower acrylamide concentration creates larger pores, suitable for separating larger molecules. On the contrary, higher acrylamide concentration creates smaller pores, providing a better choice for separating smaller molecules. A discontinuous buffer system is often used in SDS page to create a stacking effect on the upper gel before proteins enter the lower separating gel. The upper stacking gel is lower in acrylamide concentration and pH value while the lower separating gel is higher in acrylamide concentration and pH value. Glycine has an isoelectric point of 5.97. Thus, it carries negative charge in the electro buffer where the pH is 8.3. Under a given electric field, glycine enters the upper gel and migrates towards the anode but slows down significantly due to the switch of pH to 6.8, where glycine carries almost no charge. Chlorine ions are relatively smaller and negatively charged, thus move faster in the gel. A steep voltage gradient between the two ion fronts is therefore generated, bringing the proteins to enter into the upper gel and stack into a thin line when they arrive at the interface between the upper and lower gels. The stacking effect is to ensure that proteins reach the same starting point before separation for more accurate results. When glycine enters the separating gel, it becomes negatively charged again due to the high pH and speeds up to catch up with chlorine ions. Proteins, however, are slowed down due to the friction from smaller pores in the separating gel and are separated by molecular size. Proteins are then visualized after electrophoresis. Common methods include Comassi blue staining and Western blotting. In the latter, proteins are transferred onto a PVDF membrane, and proteins of interest are detected with specific antibodies. As shown in the figure here, the molecular weight of proteins is inversely proportional to the relative mobility. We can then compare the position of bands with the marker to evaluate the size of proteins. We can also investigate changes of particular proteins under normal, diseased, or treatment conditions. So take protein samples for an electric swim next time when you need to identify or separate proteins. <laughs>